Hello, this is a video walkthrough of what the QA tracker is and how to use it to help test in Ubuntu QA and submit your results for testing events. So I have in front of me a wiki page from the Ubuntu wiki on the QA tracker that answers a few of the basic questions. So what is it? The QA Tracker is our master tool for recording the results of our tests and for maintaining our test cases utilized during those tests. And there are several instances of the QA Tracker. Uh, three are listed here. They are generally named after what they are primarily used for. So you can see that the ISO Tracker is used for ISO testing. Package tracker is used for calls for testing or application testing, and the laptop tracker, which is utilized for laptop testing. So how does it work? Uh, as you can read, the the QA tracker allows us to specify milestones or testing events and create products or packages that we want to test as a part of those events and then finally allow you to submit results and track bugs that you might find as part of testing those products and packages. So to utilize the QA Tracker you'll need a Ubuntu SSO account. You probably already have one of these if you've utilized a service such as Ubuntu One or Launchpad. If not, there's a handy link here to create a new account on Launchpad to get started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the call for testing walkthrough as a way of demonstrating how the QA tracker works. So we've met the requirements and prerequisites in this case. I'm going to go ahead and launch the package tracker. The first step is to log in. So I'm going to click the login button on the left. And it's going to take me through a Ubuntu SSO verification screen and I will sign in. Now let's pretend I wanted to help in the web apps testing. So I can click on that link and I can see that there are two packages that are being tested as part of this testing. I can also see that there are potentially older builds for these packages that may have results. By clicking on this link I can see the older version of the package, the number of testers and test cases as well as bugs reported against that version. Now, when we're reporting live, we only want to report against active builds, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to showing only the active builds. Let's go ahead and pretend we want to submit a result for the web apps package. As you can see, there's a list of test cases now for the web apps package. You see other test runs of passed and failed, as well as the bugs that have been encountered during those test runs. We also see a link to the installation instructions and a link to the bug reporting instructions. So if I click on the link to the installation instructions, you'll notice we have instructions for installing and uninstalling the web apps package. Depending on the type of testing you're doing, you'll either see a link to the installation instructions or download instructions as may be required for your testing. All forms of testing should have a link to the bug reporting instructions 
These instructions may contain commands to issue to utilize something like Ubuntu bug or a port, or they may simply be hyperlinks, as they are in this case, to Launchpad to file the bug manually. So let's click open a test case and see how we can report a bug. You can see that this test case is in the form of an action and an expected result. For each action, we should have the expected result in order for the test case to pass. So if we've gone through the test case and we're ready to submit a result, we can scroll down and do a few things. First of all, if the test case failed at any point, we should note the duplicate bugs that are listed here, check for a duplicate bug, and if not found, we can file a new bug using the bug reporting instructions located at the top of the test case. If we have a pass result, we can submit the result and still potentially submit a bug that we may have found during the test case that did not prevent the test case from passing. For more information on how to determine and report a bug and execute a test case, you can see the walkthrough guide here. This shows the two common examples for test cases the ex action and expected result, or alternatively the test case shown as a form of yes or no questions where the expected result is a yes. The next section talks about how to evaluate bugs and how to determine if your test case passed or failed. Finally, here's a few examples of a result submission. This is a result submission showing a failure with a couple bugs that have been comma separated. These just list the launchpad bug numbers. Here's an example of a pass submission where there was no bugs found. Finally, after you submit the result, as you can see on this page, you'll have the reporter name, any bugs found, and comments. Also you'll notice the pencil, and the pencil will allow you to edit your result, and you can either update it or delete it as needed. This has been an overview of the QA Tracker. Thank you.